Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Sigoy. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player, and I've been vegan for over nine years. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, which has helped over 500 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to hear today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Aurora, another fitness expert. So very excited to dive into her story of how she went plant-based, talk about the uh, common mistakes and things that she sees in the members that she coaches. And we're going to talk a little bit about mental health in the fitness realm. So Aurora, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really good. Like we talked before, just coming back from my birthday, took a day off. So feeling really relaxed and rejuvenated. Yes. Happy birthday to anyone hey. who listened to this. So today is like what, June 21st? So your birthday on June 20th? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, good. And they're going to know that this podcast episode comes out like seven days from now. So when you guys are listening to this... Um, so yeah, let's let's dive into your story. Um, first of all, we got connected through Robert Cheek, a common friend of ours. Uh, we had the opportunity to jump on your show, which I really appreciate. And so I want to have you on because again, you're an expert in your field, and I wanted our members to kind of benefit from that on a selfish level. I want them to get some some value from what you had to share. But let's dive into what got you to become vegan ultimately. Well, I am a kind of weirdo because I don't eat meat from nine years old. And um, I was not never... weird though. I wish a lot of people wish they would have done that. Yeah. Well, of course, in uh, nine years old, you don't really make a choice by going vegan. I was uh, growing up in Ukraine in a regular kind of family that are usually eats meats and dairy. And I was a weirdo kid who refused meat at nine years old. And the reason for that was actually super... Um, I guess stupid because I just didn't like the taste of it that's what I was saying and I didn't like the idea of killing the animal when I was so small because I yeah. grew up in a farm in like a small village so usually when animal get killed I saw that and I yeah. just ran away from that I was crying and then after that when it was a dinner or something and then there was a dish on the plate I mean, on the table and uh, everyone was eating that. I was like, just clearly make a connection. And I was asking my parents, like, is that the same chicken that you killed today in the morning? And they were like, yeah. And everyone was keep eating it. And I couldn't. I was like crying. So my yeah. mom, she was worried. She took me to many doctors, psychologists, like saying my kid is weird. Like, and she was think that I'm not going to grow up well, you know, normal because I don't eat meat. And my mom has no idea how to replace that. But yeah. good for me, I mean, because my mom, I don't think she would completely, uh, you know, like, like add the, the, the nutrients that needed if I would be vegan from nine years old. So because I was still eating fish and dairy, that's what kind of she switched her focus to. And since okay. God didn't push me because she was trying to push me to eat meat, but you know, I was refusing it. So she finally gave up. And then I was just like heavy on dairy and on fish all my life until I moved to America, which has happened uh, over eight years ago. I moved to New York. And um, if you compare dairy products in United States to Europe, Europe, yeah. you have a huge difference like uh with this being said i don't uh, think i switch to veganism just because dairy in america sucks sorry for my language is really bad but yeah. taste what's the difference it tastes gross in the United States. So I was big cottage cheese lover, yogurts, kefir. And in the United States, it just, just doesn't taste good. Uh, I was using the regular milk in the Europe. When I bought the regular milk in the United States, my stomach got upset like right away. Interesting. But the interesting thing, I start asking people around, right? Like, 
and everyone was saying, well, we don't drink that milk. We use almond milk or soy or, or oat. And I was like, what? But why? So I was questioning this because in Europe, you have really good milk, especially from the farm when I yeah. was growing up, right? It was straight from the co. And um, yeah, it was funny, right? Because even in now, if you can see, I think 90% of Americans don't actually drink a regular milk. They all have almond milk right now, which is super popular, but yeah. they still eat dairy like cheeses right and I was a big cheese lover so that was the hard thing to give up kind of but at the same time when I tried those cheeses they wasn't taste as good as the ones that I used to taste in my family in the village so I was like mm. and fish I really had fish rarely so it was really easy for me to give up and I got yeah. in that you know just idea of getting ready for my first bodybuilding show completely vegan so that's kind of was my motivation. I was wanted to try to uh, do something new as a bodybuilder show. And I wanted to do it completely vegan. And okay. I find a trainer and I told that. And she, I mean, I, I hope she's not listening to that, but she was absolutely ridiculous. She said, whoa, it's impossible. You're never going to do it. <laughs> but I'm the type of person... Say me that and I will do it. So after she said that, I was motivated even more. So I said, no, I will watch me. And I did. And I won that show. My first ever bikini show. I took overall in New York. Nice. And uh, yeah. And then from that point, I got like super motivated to keep doing what I'm doing. Plus, I felt so much better without dairy. So yeah, much better. Less inflammation better recovery i was always having some type of really painful pms symptoms and yeah. that all was gone and i was so much happier so i would yeah. never come back so where where did the veganism like where did that idea come to you about because obviously again you're eating fish and dairy in your in your in your country and then you kind of came here and then it tasted gross so it was kind of a blessing in disguise like i'm just not gonna i'm gonna cut this part out but where did the part of cutting fish and you wanting to do it vegan? Was the idea of veganism already in your head or was it just like, ah, it's not as good here. I'm just going to stop and eat the rest of the stuff that I'm, that I've been eating. Well, I think the idea of veganism is came slowly after I reduced um, completely all the animal products. So first of all, it was like more like for uh, physical pers purpose and for performance, right? But then when I stopped eating those, I start to look into what's actually going on in the agriculture, into the animal usage in America and all the world, right? And how animals get treated. So the idea of plant-based lifestyle and complete veganism start to grow in me when I realize how bad we treat the animals on this planet. And I'm such yeah. an animal lover because can you imagine? In nine years old, I couldn't eat the chicken that I saw was killed, right? I yeah. have deep connection to the animals. And just in my mind, as well as a lot of my clients, dairy was never a problem because we kind of think that you don't need to kill the animal in order to get milk. Yeah. But if you really look at that, and then it was mm, almost nine years ago, and the, the videos, the films start to show up the books when you can see the truth because it was kind of hiding and especially hiding in Ukraine where I was for, from, you know, yeah. people still there not aware of what's really going on with animals and agriculture and, you know, all those industries. So when I yeah. saw how cows treated and they really killed by for milk, like eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And you also have yeah. to be pregnant to produce milk too. That's another part. They, they yeah. don't just stay pregnant all the time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then how much, you know, drugs they use to, you know, keep them pregnant all the time. And then when they have a baby, the baby gets, uh, you know, taken away from the mom just in order to keep producing the milk. And eventually humans, the only one species on this planet who drink milk, not from our mom, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, why? Like yeah, and I can't imagine the stress level too, right? Imagine you have a kid, they pull it away from you. All the stress response that you have is now going into the milk. All those hormones, all that bad yeah, energy is going into yeah. the milk. 
So it's just kind of like taking in all this information. And as more I did my research, as more I realized like how deeply I have to go vegan because I feel absolutely disconnected from the idea of, you know, drinking milk, not from my mom. Why? Why should I do it? Right. So and then I start to do more like looking on what type of products I buy for cosmetics, for my hair, for my skin. Right. How they get tested. And then like, do I need to buy leather? Do I need to buy real like skin products? Yeah. Right. So I kind of like go in deep with those. And I would just, yeah, I just going to say it out there that I'm not perfect. And I believe no one is perfect because it, we live in an vegan world, right? So it's mm -hmm. really hard. And sometimes I also still can buy something and not being aware that it was used, you know, to, you know, in some point the animal was used in production of that product, but I yeah. just do my best. And yeah. then I fell in love with all this kind of like nutrition wise. So I decided to study. And then the big switch in my mind also happened when I finished university and I become a nutritionist in America. And I was shocked sitting out there in front of the teacher and hearing that you have to eat meat and dairy yeah they teach me to do it as a nutritionist so i was like well something in the system is wrong and i really want to fix that i wanted to try to help people that i can help at least to realize that this is not right this is not true <laughs> yeah it's crazy right? it's someone someone built the institution at one point and some people with some money behind it are like, you got to say that these things are good for people, find a way to embed into the curriculum and then teach that to a bunch of people so they can go and, and share it with the world. It's yeah. that's such a the issue with nutrition certification sometimes, personal training certifications as well, because some of them will have a nutritional component in there and they'll be like, protein, steak, chicken, fish is important. Yeah, so, I did those too. I did those too, and then make me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And you pass it, sad. but you're like, I'm not going to keep that part. Yeah, but the sad part is I got a lot of clients who are actually doctors, nurses, and they come to me with the question, how do I eat? Yeah. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. you're a doctor. It's yeah. so expensive and so long in America to become a doctor. And then they say, yeah, but we have like three hours of nutrition in a year. Yeah, That's why we go to the doctors and before they even give us some medication, they should ask, how do you eat? How is yeah. your diet look like? Um, how is your water intake look like, right? How much do you sleep? How much do you work out? How many times in the week you are taking a day off, right? And before yeah. they do this, they actually give you a prescription. That's yeah. why. Treating a symptom. Yeah. yeah. And that's unfortunately, but I got shocked by like helping so many doctors. And I was like, hold on. I thought you know better than me, <laughs> but you're not really? Yeah, so unfortunately, we live in the society that build the system against us, but it's slowly changing. And I believe that people like you and me, by doing this, podcasts, books, uh, courses, right, uh, going, showing up out there on social media, we're slowly changing it. Yeah, it's a huge process, but I believe we're doing something that is more than just helping people lose weight, right? Uh, yeah. Because in some point, I believe also that we all in this planet would have to go plan based. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said it's a it's a bigger movement that we're a part of, and I think obviously it'll go well beyond our years into it. But we just want to do our part into being able to to move it forward ultimately, and hopefully, eventually, the norm is you're weird if you eat meat, and then being vegan becomes the standard. Hopefully, right? yeah, that's kind of a dream world. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's coming. It's gonna happen. Um, I would love to talk about using a bodybuilding show because the one of the segues is talk about mental health when it comes to kind of health and fitness and the idea of what a great body looks like. How how did you make the leap from like let me go vegan to like let's let's step on stage because that's a big step yeah. to just be like I'm gonna diet and get super lean to step on stage. Like, did you have a background in that? Is that something you wanted, or was it just like an idea of like ah, I'm gonna try stepping on stage? Yeah. It's interesting because I never look for that. So I actually think that's a true passion because if you don't want it to become someone but you accidentally become, you know, and then you fell in love with that, it's like, well, I have to say that's the God purpose. That's what I think. Because I never think about 
even get in the gym. Like I was always think that it's stupid to train in a gym and become a bodybuilder. It's stupid. That's what I was thought. It's so funny, right? Because it's actually hard and it's not stupid. And I now change my you know, perspective on that completely. So when I moved to New York, I used to be a dancer. I danced a lot all my life from when I was six. Um, I become an actress and a dancer professionally in Ukraine. But when I moved to America, I had zero English, like zero yeah. high bye. That's all. Yeah. So to be an actress without English is kind of impossible. So I switched more to modeling and dancing. And then by doing more dancing, I re quickly realized that I cannot really support myself financially. It's really hard. And then at some point, you just physically cannot handle so many auditions. Yeah. So I slowly switched to bodybuilding because I was doing the many, many different jobs just to pay my bills. And then the yeah. gym was open 24 hours. And yeah. then just, you know, because I was a physical person and I always used to move. I, and I couldn't have no money, no time to get to the dance classes. I decided to just do at least some cardio, I guess, you know, <laughs> that's how you yeah. all started, right? Because I couldn't believe I, I can like use those machines because I don't know how to use them. So, but slowly uh, when I see other girls doing something on those machines, I'm like, mm, let me try this. Let me try that. And I, you know, I Google YouTube instagram some exercises so slowly i kind of make a little workout plan for myself and then eventually i think i accidentally got a picture from someone on the stage in the bikini doing yeah. a posing and i was like wow that's exactly what i should do because i miss the stage i'm an actress yeah. i used to work seven years in the theater in ukraine so it was like Wow, I miss the stage and I kind of like how she look like. And yeah. I think I can try to look like that, but I just don't know how. So that's when I start to look kind of for a trainer, right? And then I find that girl in New York again by accident, by my friend referral. And uh, she was doing online coaching. And um, I never met her in real life, actually before I did my first show, we all just, you know, message online. And then she said to me that it's impossible to do a plant-based diet. Because <laughs> yeah. like, because the idea came to do the show, but then I was already uh, transferring to plant-based diet. I were already reduced dairy. So it was like, okay, yeah. but now I needed to find a trainer who actually can, you know, can help me to do it on the plant-based diet. So she said, eventually, if you want to do it, but I'm not promising you, you can win the show being plant-based. And I yeah. don't know how to help you with a diet. So you have to just figure out your proteins by yourself, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's actually helped me. I'm so grateful for this trainer because first of all, she did me a proper diet. I never like, you know, um, felt too stressed or too low energy for the first show. I think it was a good experience. She did me proper macronutrients that I got lean, but I never was like crazy hungry, which is can happen, you know? A yeah. Lot. Oh yeah. I've, I've lived it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was, I mean, it was, I was hungry a little bit sometimes, but it wasn't like that craziness and I have some flexibility too, but the only thing she was not educated by plant-based protein. So the only thing that she told me is like, okay, you can eat tofu and tempeh. Yeah. <laughs> and you know how hard is that, right? For yeah. like six months, I think I was eating only tofu and tempeh. I got sick of it. I was like, yeah. I yeah. wish I know better, right? But yeah. then because I didn't know anything else and she didn't tell me anything else, I started research, right? Look at the recipes, look at the grocery list, look on those bodybuilders who actually plant-based too. So it's kind of nice, was nice that she didn't give me a full direction. So I felt like need to do my research, right? Yeah. And then that's helped me to educate myself how to actually do it. So my next show after I won that one, I was already on my own. I was like, I, I got it. I just, I just can do it by myself. Yeah. That's how it yeah. all happened. Well, I'm happy you had a good experience for your first show. Cause it's rough for a lot of people when they do that initial cut. And so yeah. I say like being, being in that space now, like before we jumped on, I was just um, on one of your posts on Instagram, we talked about 
uh, the mindset component of how we perceive ourselves, right? I'm not, I'm not lean enough. I'm not fit enough, or I'm too big or whatever it may be. Let's talk about that a little bit, because a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of people in the fitness industry that do actually end up competing, develop an unhealthy relationship with, with themselves, with their body and with food. Is that something that you have personal experience with, or that you've obviously seen while being in that space? Well, yes, I did experience that. And I help a lot of girls for show with the same problem. And it's really hard. And when we step on the stage and when we decided to get ready for any bodybuilding show, we have to make sure, first of all, in first point healthy, because a lot of the time people use a bodybuilding show as a, you know, uh, as the, as the tool to get you in the healthy mindset. And then that's not the, the case. Because yeah. if we're talking about me, first of all, I never before have any food relationship problems. Food yeah. never been a crazy thing for me. I was eating the way I was wanted to, but I was never like overeating, had any like a bad self-image problems or something. I just never questioned that a lot. I was skinny, super skinny. That was it. But because I wasn't overweight, it was kind of fine, right? Like, yeah. uh, and especially for like dancing, right? I move a lot because I dance. So I wasn't looking great, but I wasn't looking too bad. Yeah. But with this being said, after my first season, not from the first show, because I did a couple more shows and I get even better, even leaner. After that first season, I realized that I do have a problem now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're super lean and you're super hungry and now you can eat whatever you want. First day after yeah. my show, it was a binge. Like I ate a lot of stuff and I couldn't yeah. stop myself of eating. Sans God, when I was so lean, it didn't affect, you know, the way I look. It's only affect my digestion and that was a trouble. Next day, I felt absolutely growth. My yeah, stomach, for sure. Yeah, my stomach was shocked. But since God, I was smart enough to keep working on slowly adding some variety and adding some, you know, uh, higher carbohydrates and more fats into my diet because I was already a nutritionist. So I knew if now I'm going to keep doing the same thing, my body is going to just blow up because I'm yeah. so depleted. Yeah. So by knowing that, I think that's helped me to stay away, you know, from that overeating problem. And then my self-image was not as much distracted as well because I gained weight slowly, super slowly. Yeah. And I also, I would say also I blessed genetically. I'm a type of skinny girl. It's harder for me to actually gain. So even if I you know, add more calories, I'm going to gain slowlier than the other people, just genetically how I built and my metabolism is really high. But by doing more shows and competing more and more now, it's my eighth year of doing shows. I did two years break and then I come back last year and I did mm -hmm. Olympia. And then I'm going to tell you, I can feel and see the difference now how quickly I gain weight and how yeah. worse my body react on any type of diet. So it's like this pull and push. When you pull and push too much, your body is eventually start reacting in a different way. Mentally, is super hard. My last prep was the hardest prep for me. And it wasn't successful competition season because I was doing so much my body wasn't reacting. We didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Also, we have to mention I am a female. So after my first competition season, which was eight years ago, as I told you, I completely lost my period for two years. Yeah. I have crazy problems with my hormones. And it's different for anyone, but a lot of the girls has have that issues with that. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't come back to the normal hormones. Since God, it didn't affect the way I looked. I was still having a normal metabolism. It's just my menstrual circle is shut down and I couldn't come back with that. And it's scary because you actually cannot have kids if you don't have your menstrual circle going on. Yeah. And yeah, it's it was a trial as an error. And I'm happy for my journey because I now help so many women with the same problems because they know what to do. But I know 
it's it's like a process. Right now, I am the heaviest weight I ever been, and I love my body. Truly, it's not a fake thing. I love how I look like, and I appreciate every you know pound that I gain because I know it's healthy, and yeah. I know with working out and choosing the healthier options, even the weight you gain is gonna look different than the weight you gain in an unhealthy way, if it makes yeah. sense. And I really can tell you with my client experience, I have two clients, let's say, and one of them eat the chocolate and saying, oh my God, I feel like so bad. I hate myself. I eat the like a full chocolate bar and I'm going to gain tomorrow five pounds. The same situation with the other client and she's doing the same thing, but she is telling me, you know what, yesterday I ate a chocolate bar on the party with my friends and it was so much fun and I enjoyed that bar and I allow myself to do it even though it's not in my macronutrients, but I believe tomorrow I will work out my legs and that's going to be in a proper spot. It's going to help me to grow some muscles. Guess what? It's actually happening. So the first one girl is going to gain and um, fat and then think about the, you know herself super bad and I'm going to feel guilty. The other one is going to be happy and will send me a picture from the gym with muscle gain. Yeah. So everything starts in your mind. Everything. Yeah. How we talk about ourselves, how we present ourselves, how we look at the mirror and how we actually, um, how we react on the thing that we do. That's what's make different. With this being said, I don't mean. Yeah, I was going to say, let's put a disclaimer there for the yeah. chocolate. You can't just be yeah, chocolate with, all day and be like, I am light and fit. <laughs> yeah, with being said, with this, you don't have to eat chocolate. You're like, you, you, you cannot eat chocolate all day long and say, I'll be healthy, I'll be skinny, yeah. right? No, of course not. But I'm just saying that because it's true. It's truly all in the mind. I have a yeah. client that comes to me, girls that look so good. And they hate themselves and yeah. they cry all over saying, I hate myself. I hate my image. I don't like how I look like, please help me. And I cannot help them until they change the mindset. Yeah. And the same hand, I have a girls who actually overweight and look like they need to lose something. And they say, you know, I look, um, I look okay. I like how I look like maybe it's just couple muscles, like, you know, a couple points of muscles, a couple pounds, and I'll be fine. And then I truly believe that too. I look at her, I'm like, yeah, she's really looking good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's fascinated me. But over the years, as more I do teach people and help them, as more realize that everything in your mind. Yeah, it's, that's a great point. Um, a lot of people will use body transformation as a means to fulfill something or to not confront or deal with something that's happening in their life. So either there's like a trauma somewhere and then I'll be like, well, if I get fit, it's going to solve it. But then you fall down the rabbit hole of I'm never lean enough. I'm never fit enough. I'll never like, there's always that kind of like, well, I could be leaner and there could be a bit more muscle here. I can have a little bit more glutes. I can have a little bit more of a flatter stomach. And that's just like a superficial band-aid solution to the thing that they actually need to deal with. And a lot of the times the people that do that work, even though they could be carrying 30, 40 pounds extra, but they did the work. They're not running from anything. I feel fucking great. I look great. Like, eh, I lose a few pounds. It's yeah. okay. Like I'll still feel good about myself, but I can lose it because I want to, not because I have to, to try to fulfill something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I agree with you. But in order that happen, I wasn't born like that. Like any any human, I was having some doubts, you know, especially with my story. You can imagine moving from totally different culture and don't have any English. I, you know, I struggle a lot with just not being accepted in here in America, mm -hmm. right? And just being scary, not only look bad, just even say something because my accent, right? So I really have a lot of experience in that field how you can become confident 
even though my English is not perfect still and my accent is still there and I know I'm not look like, you know, like I maybe can look like, but I have those skills that I built that help me to grow and truly love myself. And if you truly love and appreciate your true self, the other people, even if they may don't like you, they will appreciate you because they see that you who you are. You know what I mean? And yeah. I say to anyone who listened to this, like, I think the first thing that you need to do is start to, you know, self-love. And then, you know, it's not easy, but what's helped me the most is, first of all, controlling my thoughts over me and not over other people. Because I think we spend yeah. a lot of the time thinking about others and, oh, what this person think about me, what they said or what they look like, what how they look at me. So it doesn't even fucking matter. I'm sorry for my language. Yeah, which is so interesting because when you think of us thinking of that, they're, prob they're doing the same thing. They're thinking about how others, they're not thinking about you, they're thinking about themselves. And yeah. even if they were, right? Because people talk behind, some people at one point will talk behind your back, right? Just anyone. Does that change anything to how you should live your life, right? Um, I'll, sh I'll, I'll throw in that in quickly. I was listening to a video. They say like, I think it's 85% of people on their deathbed, their biggest regret was that I wish that I had lived life for me. Oh so yeah. Not letting the expectations of other people guide in how they live their life. And That's so, yeah, so we good. do, we do lose a lot of time to like, what are they going to think? Well, I can't, I can't start and work out and want to compete. I can't start getting every, cause what are people going to think of me? And you just miss yeah. out on the thing that what you truly want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, follow your heart and do what you like. But you have to have like you have to have courage to do it. You have to have passion and you have to uh, step out from your comfort zone. And I just yeah. really like that. So that's the first thing. Like just step out from your uh, comfort zone. If you was thinking to do something and you was like, oh, it's so hard. I don't know if I can do it. If if that thought to do something gets into your mind, is it's mean you can do it. It's already, it's already, you can, because if you cannot do it, you would never think about that. Yeah, exactly. I, I yeah. I like to build goals, not the dreams, because I think we can dream about something which we never will achieve because it's like a dream, right? Yeah. There's no but deadline you, too. Yeah. If you have a goal, well, you can achieve it sooner or later, or maybe not. Okay, I may be never going to become Miss Bikini Olympia, first ever plant-based Miss Bikini Olympia. But if I'm going to die trying, I'll be okay with that. <laughs> Why not? Right? And um, yeah. And I also want to say that something that if, if anyone listened to this, because I remember when I was listening and looking for the answer, I was like, okay, well, I have to love myself. But how? Right? Yeah. How to do it practically? So I would say, first thing, I always say, if you win the morning, you win the day. It's not I said, but it's a good it's a good thing. So I build a routine. And maybe because I'm a morning person, I do it in the morning. But doesn't matter when you do it. Just, you know, find the time and the day for yourself. So the self-love for me started with self-do. I find the thing that I like to do. And I find the, the time in my schedule to do those things just for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you love and appreciate yourself, you would do something for you, not for money, not for your clients, not for work, not for your family, for you. So I wake up and I spend an hour for myself. Either I do stretching, recovery, reading, praying, meditating, whatever I feel I need to do, I do it for myself. That's a self-care I kind of do. like, And that helped me to, you know, to start my day and to feel better every morning no no matter what's going on in my life the other yeah. thing is self-care is also continuum with your food choices so everyone everyone in my instagram always asking me how you eat so healthy i'm like i'm not eating healthy i just eat what they like to eat i don't actually like pizzas or bread or pastas because i don't feel like they make me feel good right so i love myself so deeply that I don't want to feed myself, uh, you know, dirt. I don't want to eat something like that's not going to make me feel good. 
So every time when I look at the plate of anyone, I'm like, okay, that's the plate in front of you. That's kind of you because you are what you eat. So do you want to be a piece of chicken fried in a deep oil? Or you want to be a nice salad with different colors and vegetables? Because at the end of the day, that's all we are, right? We are what we eat. We are what we think. And we are what we do. So to feel a little better about yourself, if you just start with changing what you eat and what you do and what you think about yourself, that's going to help a lot. And I, th- I think you just mentioned, I want to just add to that, that a lot of the time people start transformation and that's kind of wrong that they wanted to heal themselves by just losing the weight. But on the other hand, a lot of the time it's helping them if they do the work mentally. Yeah. So if you do it as a package and I know your programming, do it. And I teach my clients as well. I always ask about mental health in the same time when they follow the plan with workouts and nutrition, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's such a big component because if you don't address that, you're just going to be left feeling empty at the end of it. And some people will genuinely be able to power through it and be disciplined enough to get that outcome that they want. But a lot of people, they'll start on the journey of improving their body composition and losing the weight. And then as they progress, like this is hard. It's not really solving the thing that's behind my head. It's not a conscious thought. It's subconscious, right? It's like I'm running away from this thing subconsciously and it's not really making me feel any better to go in this direction. So then they just bail and they're like, let me go try this thing instead, right? And then they just jump from thing to thing without never addressing the core issue. But you're right. If they do take it on, and that's why I love fitness, it's if you learn to master your body and get a handle over your nutrition and your exercise, you've now mastered that this area of your life. And yeah. now you have tools that you can be like, well, let me just bring this to relationship. Let me just bring this to business. Let me just bring this to career, to family, whatever it may be. Yeah, you're right. Because this is the hardest part. And if you are become a great in this you can apply the same structure to all of your life and that's why i fell in love with bodybuilding as well when i first time tried i was like whoa that's making me much stronger but not physically mentally right yeah that's hard to diet to get that lean it's really hard mentally because you have to like you're hungry you want certain things you don't want to work out because your body's so depleted and you have to force yourself to go and do it yeah, and it's not for everyone, but I truly believe that maybe everyone can try to do it one time in life just to feel that pressure. It's like it's like the same when you're doing cold plunging or standing on nails or some type of like thing that is challenging you and then you choose that challenge, right? You choose to step out from your comfort zone. And I yeah. did something crazy. And I think that's why it's jumped me up of my like, in my growth thing, in my, in my career, because I step out from my comfort zone by moving to the other country without zero English and then decided to do something I never done. Right. And then, which is mentally hard. So in the same time, I would never regret that. And I always say people do it, like do the same. If you feel like you want it, it, it's great. It's great for you. It's a great challenge. Any challenges in life is great. If we're not challenging ourselves, we're not growing. With this being said, you have to enjoy it too. Because a lot of the time I question myself, do I want to really do this show? Because I want to enjoy my life as well, right? Yeah, which is hard to do both at the same time. (laughs) Yes, yes. So it's, 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 it's a balance that is really hard to reach with competing. And that's why I always wanted to remind to anyone who listened to that, bodybuilding competing is unhealthy sport okay just yeah let's be honest no one is talks about but that's the truth being super lean like that like we need to get for the stage is unhealthy because yeah. i was there i was looking on a picture on instagram with six packs especially female yeah. and i was like oh i want to look like that too all year round yeah. well if you want to look like that all year round, you first of all probably going to have problems to get pregnant. But the other thing is you probably need to take some special drugs and steroids to never get out of leanness. Yeah, there's a lot like 
talk about like Winstrol and Anavar when you're trying to like stay that lean all year round. It's just it messes with your body. And yes. Yeah, it's it's a very I want to talk about that. Yeah, it's a very unrealistic expectation to trying to stay that lean. And I don't know for you, but when I did my first show, I got like shredded, right? Kind of like just veins crawling up your stomach and everywhere. But then the issue is that that became my point of comparison as to what being lean represented. Because before it was like eh, a little bit of a six pack, but just like kind of beach summer body before that. But when I step on yeah. stage, that became my new point of reference. And now that's what, when I said the word lean, that's what that meant. And so every time I was like, well, I got to get lean. And then I was like, holy fuck, I got to be like shredded to 4% body fat. I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to go back to that. And then you fall down the opposite direction. So it's dangerous because it does become your point of comparison because it's probably the best you'll ever look in your entire life. Right. Yeah. But it's not healthy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone get in this trouble with me, yeah. which is funny. I kind of, I, I don't know why, but sense God, maybe because I don't have as much muscles that I need to have in order to love myself when I that shredded so honestly I hate my stage look for life yeah so so at some point in the prep and I know that point when I don't like how I look like I think I look like I'm sick and I'm gonna die yeah. tomorrow and that's the stage look for me everyone looks like is, that without a tan when they yeah <laughs> yeah but a lot of us bodybuilders love it they like look in my vans look at and I'm not the type of person sends God I have no idea yeah. why but I know that Oh, oh, I don't look good. I look too skinny. Again, maybe because I don't have as much muscles as let's say those bodybuilders are, right? If we're not yeah. talking about bikini, if we're talking about bodybuilders, they like have a huge ton of muscles. So when they get shredded like that, they still have mass, right? Yeah. I don't have as much. So especially when I depleted them, not pumping up or have no, like have zero carbs before the stage, right? So I think I look, bad i don't like it i never do photo shoots i don't like like and i know people around me my husband he hate that too yeah. he, he don't think it looks good or sexy or something so yeah. it's also helping by the way like one other thing is i think really helps me and i know it's gonna help a lot of the listeners is your surroundings right people around you like you have to make sure you have a nice support like in any weight in any shape People around yeah. you have to love and appreciate you, like give you a compliment, say good things when you're healthy, when you look good. I'm not saying like my husband was not treated me well when I was super skinny and lean, right? But I'm just saying he always compliment me when I was gaining weight. So when I was have self-doubt and I was like, oh, do you think I gained too much? There's a someone saying, no, you look great. So if you have yeah. that person around you, that's amazing support. And then yeah. if you don't have anyone, it's fine. But if you have a person around you who keeps saying, yeah, you look bad. Yeah, you better be shredded. Like you, like, a, like a trainer, for example. If you have a, like a trainer like that, run away. Run away from that person. This is not good. Like yeah. I, I have a bad experience in my life too. Bad experience with the trainers who was offering me those drugs that we talked about, those specific supplements, right? To to just yeah. you know, gain more muscles or look more lean. And then I refuse it, sense God. But, you know, not everyone smart. Sometimes girls just don't know what is that. And then they just do it. What a vulnerable have, place, right? Yeah, and then you have tra terrible, terrible health issues after that. You may have. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that reinforcement piece. Once you get that lean, right? Because if you, when you get that lean, I was like, Oh my God, you look great, blah, blah. Then it starts to be tied into your brain of like, Oh, that's when I look great. Therefore I need to look like this all the time to look great versus your partner did a really good job of like, Oh, like you're putting on weight. Like, that's awesome. Like you look great. Then that's yeah. a reinforcement that you attach. I was like, Oh, well, like when I look like this, I look awesome. But yeah, some people do have either a partner that's a bit too douchebag ish. Or that just like is too like likes you too shredded. Then if he reinforces that in your brain, then it sucks. But that's what's going to your brain's going to attach to. I look great when I'm this shredded, and then you're going to just have this endless pursuit of trying to be this lean all the yes, time. Yes, yes. As I told you, like 
I'm the heaviest way right now. And I just did last week a photo shoot. When the, like, I usually do photo shoots. I work like a fitness model a lot, but I've never been as heavy. Like I've never been as not lean and I enjoyed it. But then when he reached out to me, I was like, hmm. Should they say no and take a couple of weeks to just diet? Because like, and then I was like catching myself on that thought. And I was like, no, 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 no. I should yeah. do it. And I did it. And then I look at the pictures and I was like, wow, I look different. I look not lean, but I look good. And that's yeah. amazing. So a lot of the time I also like to tell my clients, like do photo shoots when you off your stage weight when you off your competition season as well as you on right yeah. because we always have a lot of pictures and memories from the time it was lean and shredded but if you only have that as you told me right as a reference you are always yeah. gonna think that's the only way i can be like that i can do photo shoots i can be good and sexy but if you have an Father shoots and in the other weight when you are not as shredded but you're healthy but you look just juicy you look muscular you look healthy that's the other you know reference and now if i'm gonna take those two pictures and compare them i would say oh my god i look so much better now you yeah. really can see it like you look healthier and also make sure you you know you pay attention how you feel right I was going to say, cause you because you feel so much better when you're yeah. off stage, like stage yeah. weight. Yeah. It, like you feel like, and then not, not talking only about stage, right? Just even doing any type of like weight loss challenge or any type of uh, nutrition plan, always listen to yourself, how I feel, right? Not only how I look like, how my measurements looks like, but how I feel, how I perform in the gym, and uh, like how I recover, do I food focus? Because I I remember when I was shredded like that, I was crazy food focused. I was angry. I was stressed. Yeah. I was always in kind of anxiety of something. And I don't, I was, I was so like, my hormones was messed up, right? I didn't have my period. Like um, I was having like sucks relationship with my husband because I was always unhappy like yeah. sex was no zero sex drive yeah. and the funny thing is like we take that picture with the six-pack guy on the fitness magazine right and we think that oh my god he's looking so good he must feel so good he must feel like he's so sexy and he is like like the best guy on the planet 90 percent of the time people who look like that feel like a bullshit right because yeah. we and Put it as they can't get their dick hard because your sex drive just goes away when you're that shredded. I remember that. You just you would have rather eat a muffin than have sex when you're that you see? shredded. Yeah, yeah, it just goes away. It's crazy, right? The same yeah, problem with me. No my, sex drive. Yeah, mine went away for like for almost like six months post show after. Oh. And I was worried. I was like, did I mess myself up? I'm like, I was like, whatever, 18, 19 at the time. I'm like, I'm 19, I'm not supposed to have issues with this for full six months after being that shredded. So that's what the people like, if you don't want to compete, don't like, <laughs> you don't have to kind of go through these things. Yeah. Yeah. But even if you diet, just make sure you stop. I have some, I have yeah. some clients who like, I want to transform. I want to diet. I want to look like for the stage, but I'm not going to compete. And I have yeah. to explain them. Well, let's back up. If you want to look like for the stage and you're not going to compete, what's the point? Yeah, what's the point of being a deplete and like depleting and getting you ready to step on stage? Because you don't look like that before you deplete anyways. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm happy we have this talk because no one talks about that. So even my pictures on my Instagram, guys, if you come and see me on the stage, I don't look like that day before, sometimes an hour before. Yeah. Like I look really sick. I look super skinny. <laughs> yeah, it's, in it's fact, temporary. Yeah, in fact, I don't like how I look like even. So yeah. just be careful with that image and then with comparison, right? So we always compare ourselves not only to uh, others, but to our best version. And when we see that picture from the stage or from that photo shoots next day after the show, we think that, oh, we forgot about how we look like and how like crazy was all that prep and how... Yeah had so much stress and we only remember that day that, that you photo, know yeah. that's good 
emotions, that picture. But now you have yourself much healthier with a little bit more body fat and maybe with a little bit less six packs, but six pack is overrated to be honest. Yeah, I agree. You saw my Instagram to the photos of when I was in Tulum, I think I was like 7% body fat. Um, You don't feel strong. You don't feel good. You just get to like 10% for men. Like then you feel like Superman. Then you just feel awesome. Like more body fat is a great, is a great thing. But I guess like also it's like telling people don't touch the fire because it burns. Right. And then they touch it themselves. and like, ah, yeah, this hurts. I shouldn't do this. That's the same thing here. Like I feel like some people need to get to that level of shredded to be like, oh, there's nothing special about it. Actually, it makes me feel like shit. And so it's that that balance between some people will want to do it so that they can experience it for themselves. And some people will just take our word for it and be like, all right, cool. I don't need to experience any of that. Because Mm -hmm. besides cool photo, there's no positive for me to step on stage besides the photo, which is just a temporary memory that you have ultimately. Yeah, it's just like I said, like, I I truly believe that this is a great challenge, right? And maybe everyone should try it at least one in life to get as shredded, just like a challenge wise, right? To push yourself out there and then push your limits. Uh, and again, it's going to be harder or easier, depends on your genetics, depends on your just like start point, right? Yeah. Because I, I think I'm lucky because I know a lot of different clients I have and how hard they work and how low the calories have to go to get that shredded. Like as yeah. for me, uh, when I compare like my macronutrients to a lot of my clients, I am just like, oh my God, they're so blessed. I eat so freaking much all the time. Yeah. And they yeah. look so lean. A lot of the time, people forget that too. Like, it's not me. Like, I'm not just saying that your journey is going to be the it's same. Not a fair everyone. game for everyone. We'll put it that yeah. way. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone is really different. So some people can eat a little more and then get still those six packs. And some people are not. So again, it's always kind of like a genetic game, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Aurora, I have to I have to run. I have a meeting, but I want to say a massive thank you for taking the time to jump on the podcast with me. Thank you very much for being so authentic and vulnerable and sharing because you're right. Not a lot of people talk about that. And I'm trying to bring a bigger light to it because in the fitness space, we're supposed to say like, get shredded, come and see me. But we're going to say like, hey, it's not going to solve any of your problems. If you want to be healthy, then we're here, right? So I really appreciate your, your insights. Um, and thank you very much for jumping on the show. And where can people find more about you? Yes, you can find me easy on my website, which is auroraprofit.com or on my Instagram, same auroraprofit. Beautiful. So for everyone listening, I will link it down below so you can go and show her some love and support. And if again, if you want to hire her, go for it, right? I record these shows with other fitness professionals because at the end of the day, you want to work with someone that you connect with. That's very important, yes. right? Thank so I'll put all so the much. links down below. Yes, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. I am absolutely happy to always share. And I appreciate that you touch on something that no one is want to talk about. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for participating with me. Yep. See you soon.